which uh, this is something uh, to be honest with you that you know we were aware of and you know anticipated that this was going to happen. Uh, you know, we've I, she's worked here. She's been here ten years and done a tremendous job in terms of being able to build this program to where it is now. Uh, you know, a national brand, uh, very competitive, and um, I've worked with her for four years and been able to see you know this continue to grow and, and and have the success that it's had. But you know, as any relationship and ours was more than just uh, you know kind of employer employee. Uh, relationship, you know, we we had a, a great friendship, and you know, she's expressed to me many times if the opportunity does come, you know, to her to to go home, you know, that's something that she would definitely consider, um, and and I respect that, and also understand too that's uh, you know where she grew up, where she played basketball, um, you know, she was just honored uh, there uh, earlier. I'm sorry, late late in the fall last year being the first uh, female student athlete to have her jersey um, in, the, in the Raptors of the Dome there. And, and her mom's there, you know, as well. And she, as you guys know, she talks a lot about her mom and, and you know, that presence, what that, what that means to her. Um, but also the same token, too, is, as we operate, um, you know, we, we need to be proactive in this. And I had the opportunity to um, put in front of her a, a very strong contract prior to the Mid-American Conference uh, basketball tournament. And when I say strong, you know, that was the words that she used and her agent used, uh, you know, something that uh, not just strong for UB, not just strong for Mid-American Conference, but for, you know, a group of five institution uh, that, that we are. And they were very appreciative of that offer. But when they had the opportunity to have conversations with Syracuse and progress down that road, um, you know, she informed me that, uh, you know, she needed to go home. It was time for her to go home. And I, I definitely respect that and honor that. And, you know, as we've uh, got to this day, uh, we had an opportunity to, you know, sit down, her and I, with uh, the current staff. And then we also Zoomed with, uh, you know, our student athletes as well to inform them of the news of what's happening. But then also, too, for me to give an opportunity to, to let them know from a timeline standpoint, uh, you know, what, what happens next, um, as you saw in the release. You know, the national search has begun, already begun, and uh, I'll have an opportunity to meet with our student athletes when they get back in town. It's spring break, wrapping up spring break right now uh, for uh, from a UB standpoint. But, you know, I want to sit in front of them uh, as a group individually and just talk about characteristics and qualities of the next of the next head coach. And, you know, we'll we'll continue to move forward. Uh, it's our it's our hope to be able to you know name the next uh, head coach here at UB in the next, you know, two to three weeks, you know, however that process, um, um, you know, proceeds, you know, down that, down that time frame. So excited about Coach Jack and definitely thank you, Coach Jack, for all that you've done, but more so I'm excited about, you know, the, the future of UB women's basketball. And, and she had a huge part of being able to build this up to where this, this job is going to be very attractive for, uh, for many candidates who come to Buffalo. All right, if anyone has questions for Marcus, please raise your hand. I know, uh, Rachel, you had a question, but I'm having some technical issues uh, with your camera. But if you want to ask the first question, go ahead. And then, um, uh, Ashley Holder, you can go after that. But, Rachel, why don't you start things off? Mark, thanks so much for taking the time to do this this afternoon as well. Uh, that two to three week timeline to hire a new coach, how did you formulate that? And what are you looking for? As far as a, I don't know if ideal is the right word candidate, but what are you looking for as a successor for Felicia and what she's been able to accomplish at UB? Sure, sure. That's a great question. First of all, I have to be very conservative with the timeline, um, first and foremost, because, uh, you know, you have your qualities in place and, you know, we'll, we'll get to know more qualities and characteristics from when we meet with our student athletes. And then you you have those conversations, and you know sometimes um, you know what it, it might uh, be in a position where we might be able to beat that two to three week you know time frame. Um, you know qualities that you're looking for is is someone that, and we've we've heard all this before. Um, you know someone that can um, you know is successful. You know can recruit at a, at a high have experience with success. Let's just say can recruit at a, at a high level, uh, but also too can develop uh, young women. Uh, and not not just on the basketball court, but also, you know, for preparation to what's what's next, you know, after their collegiate career is over, if they have opportunity to play professional someplace or just become, you know, outstanding young women 
uh, in society. That's uh, that's 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 critical, you know, in terms of the profile of the coach that we're that we're looking for, and and wh where they are right now. Um, you know, there there are, there are some that are still participating um, in in the NCAA tournament, and there's others that uh, you know I'm looking forward to to talking to as well. So uh, a lot of that time frame dictates in terms of where they are uh, with their with their season and where they are. Uh, you know, currently, um, you know, right now. So, you know, we'll move forward uh, in a way that, you know, we're going to do our due diligence, but also the same token that, you know, we understand this day and age, especially in, in collegiate athletics and particular with uh, collegiate basketball is, you know, from a recruiting standpoint with the, with the transfer portal and then those type of opportunities and having a signing date that's coming up here uh, later, later in April, we want to make sure we have a, a coach here that has the ability to put together staff and the ability to recruit, you know, uh, both as I would say the traditional way, but then also understanding the, the the transfer portal landscape, and then more importantly, you know, being able to recruit our, our current roster as well. So it's important to get that person in place and and be able to move forward. And a, a follow up as, as well. Uh, you found out this morning that Felicia was going to Syracuse. Uh, you know what, we, we've had conversations throughout the week, and I don't want to give specifics in terms of, of when, but um, but it was it was throughout the throughout the week and Syracuse had to go through a process the last 48 hours and uh, we're able to make it official today. Right now, um, did you make an offer to Felicia to stay after the Syrac Syracuse offered her the job or no? Uh, you know, not going to get into that. You know, right now, the, the the offer that we put together was 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 very strong. And, and again, um, Rachel, as you know, I mean, it wasn't about, you know, being able to, you know, try to match what Syracuse had to offer, you know, for Felicia, she will say and tell um, um, you guys and, and the reporters as well. I mean, the draw to come home was was what it was, what it was. And, you know, in regards to what we could have done, you know, it was that opportunity and something that she wanted to do for a long time coming and she had that opportunity. And, and again, I, I definitely appreciate that and excited that she's able to achieve her dreams. Hey, uh, Ashley, and then we'll go to Paul after that. Oh, you muted, Ashley. Sorry, I kept talking to him after you just told me I was muted. Um, yeah, thanks for doing hey, that's not a Tennessee today. sweatshirt you have on, is there? I, I swear I was not prepared for this today. Sarah already <laughs> got on me. I went to school there. I, I got you. No, I got not, you. I, I, I wasn't prepared that. for this. Um, <laughs> I, need much, I need much more notice next time. I hear you. But, um, when I had talked to Coach Jack earlier um, during the NCAA tournament, and she broke down just actually the MAC tournament, she broke down just talked about what everybody has meant to her during her uh, time at UV. And she specifically mentioned you, like you said, you guys are very close friends, not just colleagues. What was that conversation like uh, when she came to you that she was ready to take that next step and return home? No, you know, again, just. As you as you heard from the at the at the MAC tournament, I mean we have a very strong you know relationship, you know both working and and, and personal, and you know I, I I trust me I understand when you know she first brought this to me and it was a long time ago, uh, that you know if that opportunity ever presented itself, I mean that's that's where she wants to be you know and and she even kind of you know drifted towards you know the aspect of her mom being there and 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 how she can be able to take care of her mom. Uh, even told me the story that she can envision her mom coming to practice now. And, and again, not fully being aware because of her condition, but you know what, that's going to make her happy, you know, because she's going to be in that practice court, whatever, seeing, you know, her daughter do what she does and, and, and the student athletes do what they do what they do. So when she, when she brought that to me, I was, I was definitely supportive, but also the same token. I said, Hey, Felicia, I'm, I'm going to put something in front of you and your agent that, you know, might make that choice, you know, uh, a little more difficult for you. And, and you know what, she, uh, she definitely appreciated that, and and I think that was just a sign of the of the relationship that that we have. That she knows that I definitely cared about her. I definitely, we definitely appreciate the job that she did. And when she did get that offer, you know, from us, I mean, she was uh, she was blown away. But at the same token, uh, you know, it couldn't defeat the aspect of just coming home. Right, and and for you, as you just said, she doesn't just help develop these young ladies on the court, but as well as off the court too. She talks so much about just what they're going through in their personal lives and being there for them every day. Uh, for you, you know, I know you've touched on it already, but just how monumental has someone like that been to these young ladies, not just on the basketball court and what she's done in the program, but just in general for how she's touched so many 
uh, women's lives that have came through this program in the last 10 years. It, it, it's huge. I mean, Ashley, it, it, it's huge when, you know, you're able to, to give them that tough love, you know, so to speak, and, and be able to teach them those life lessons through basketball, you know, those life lessons through, through sport. And it, as you can see, you know, it, it, it pays off, you know, when, when these young ladies are done with basketball. I mean, you can talk about Georgia Woolley right now and how she came to UB. You know, she came to UB because of Stephanie Reed. You know, it wasn't like, you know, Coach Jack went down to Australia and started and saw this kid. You know what? Stephanie Reed saw this kid and had the conversation, you know, with, with Coach Jack and the staff that, hey, this is a kid that, that needs to come to UB. And Stephanie talked to the kid about her experience. So when you are Sierra Dillard, the things that, you know, you see, you know, their relationship that they have and, and from a social media standpoint, what Sierra's doing, Sierra Dillard's doing, you know, from a professional standpoint right now. So, you know, those stories, you know, go on and on. And, you know, being able to have that impact on, on people's lives, being able to, to look at Alumni Arena, and I, and I wasn't here 10 years ago, but I can imagine attendance, you know, for that first women's game to, you know, the attendance at our last uh, home game on, on senior day. And seeing, you know, close to 2,000 people in there and, and all 2,000 people stand to, to recognize Summer Hempel and Eddie, 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 yeah, yeah, you know, that's, that's phenomenal. So um, she's had a tremendous impact, not just here with UB basketball, not just in athletics, not just in the campus community, but, you know, her, her impact in, in Western New York and inspiring, you know, young women, not just in basketball, but to do their best is, uh, is, has been phenomenal. Thanks, Morgan. I will uh, take the shirt off. Well, thank you, but turn your camera off when you do that. Don't worry, I'll turn it off. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Paul. Hey, Mark. Uh, thanks for taking the time to do this today. Um, I, uh, you've mentioned the impact that she has had on this program, and, and we could list the accomplishments for, for days. Um, what's going to be the biggest challenge trying to follow that up? Because, I mean, basically you've, you're trying to replace the best coach in program history. What's the biggest challenge on your end of doing that? and you know, do you, uh, you already mentioned that the, the program is attractive now. So do you almost set the bar a little higher for the next coach? So, you know, just what do you, what, what's kind of that mindset going into this? Yeah, you're exactly right, Paul. You know, you do have to set that bar, bar a little higher. Uh, but also too, it's, um, it's an opportunity for candidates who come up, candidates who are interested in it, because they know that this is not an easy follow. OK, so I, I appreciate candidates that want to come in here and be able to say, hey, I want to be the next women's head women's basketball coach at UB. Uh, you, you know, I don't want to hear I want to be the next, you know, uh, Coach Jack. OK, because you can't replicate what, what what Coach Jack, you know, did here. You can't you can't come here and be Coach Jack. You need to be the coach that you can be. So, you know, from from that aspect, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to dive in deep and, and be able to you know, find that person that we feel can come in here, understand Buffalo, understand, you know, our brand, you know, where it is now and, and continue this tradition. All right, thanks. Yep. Rachel, did you have another question? I saw your hand up momentarily. Yes, I did. Uh, Mark, with uh, recruits who sign letters of intent, will you, will you be released those recruits from their national letters of intent? You know, that's a good question, Rachel. We, we only have one, uh, you know, right now that has a, that signed a national letter of, of intent. So, you know, we'll, we'll have a conversation uh, with that, with that individual. And as I expressed to the team, uh, you know what, uh, you know, during this time, um, whether it's the current team or, you know, our signee, there's just a wide range of emotions, you know, right now. And this time uh, in collegiate athletics, I mean, it's, it's very easy to get into the transfer portal. Um, and, and I just expressed to them, you know what, hang in tight, you know, until we have a, a new coach. And when that coach, um, you know, arrives, uh, you know, give that coach an opportunity. And, and then at, at that time, if you want to, you know, enter the transfer portal or if you want to be released from an NLI, I mean, it's, it's, it's their opportunity to be able to, to, be able to do that. So uh, at this time, no, we're not going to just release people from their, from their NLI, um, if someone does, if our signee does approach us and say, you know, Mr. Allnut, I, I, I need to be released, I will tell them the exact same thing. If, if they come back and say, I need to be released, we'll let them go. I mean, we'll, we'll definitely let them go, but I hope that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, our signee and also our, our student athletes uh, give our new coach uh, an opportunity. 
right. Any further questions from Mark? If not, I want to thank everyone for their time. And I'm sure we'll be following up, uh, hopefully, with some another press conference here in a couple of weeks. So, uh, Mark, thanks so much for your time. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. Hey, thanks, all. Appreciate everyone joining us on short notice. Thank you again. Yeah. Thank you.